Hello everyone, Kanasa here, and welcome back to Kerbal Wobble Program. No, it is indeed Coming Home Redux, but we are launching a Manta. At the beginning of this episode, and of course, the launch of these is a little bit wobbly, because those vector engines do like to gimbal rather erratically, and it's always a bit funny watching that, especially when you've got camera tools pointed directly at it, and the entirety of road is spinning around in the distance. Anyway, what we are doing now is we are launching a crude Manta, and we are going to be sending this over to the newly established Collins Space Station that we set up in the last episode. This is going to be our first crew, and yeah, it's, it's going to go over, and hopefully we will inflate that habitation module that we put up, and they are going to be the first people that are going to produce those rather lovely mission pellets for our interplanetary vessels that we will be building soon. But once again, we are going to come to the multi-vessel tracking screen as we follow the booster down to hopefully not its demise, hopefully we will land this successfully, whilst we also follow the upper stage up into orbit. Now, I cannot recall exactly who is on this vessel, but I do know that we do have some new Kerbals who are going to man the station. I have mentioned I've got a huge backlog of Kerbals that I need to get through, so every new mission I am trying to launch new Kerbals. It's, it's going to be quite painful for my save, because there are well, I will end up with an awful lot of Kerbals in this save, but we are able to get to orbit sufficiently with the Manta. Now, I know there were a few suggestions on upgrading this in the last video, including adding VTOL engines for landing on places like Armstrong. And obviously this footage was all recorded last week, so I've not gone and done that yet, but I think that is an absolutely fantastic idea, and we will probably be modifying this design at a later date. So that when we send these down to the surface of Armstrong, well, we will be able to perform a vertical landing and it will be much, much, much easier to actually land on the surface of that moon. Anyway, what I did here was I burnt out to Armstrong. I performed my maneuver, but I didn't check the map screen whilst I was doing that. And it turned out that I didn't burn quite enough and we were a little ways off. But making a new maneuver and burning at our apple waps around road well it was quite easy to get an encounter with armstrong and it was a nice encounter and we didn't really need an awful lot of delta v to slow down once we reached it due to the fact that we would really kind of matched our orbits already by being so far out from road anyway we have got baboe kerman jez kerman and unfortunately, I was a little bit slow on the uptake to see who the last Kerbal was on board here, out into this little small pack, Chungus Kerman, that's who it is, into this small little transfer vehicle that we have inside the Manta. So I did not want to dock an entire Manta to the space station, due to the fact that the Manta would look ludicrously big docked to this. So I thought what we would do is we'd send the Manta over, we'd have this little transfer vehicle in there, then the Manta would go back home, back to road, land, do all of that kind of stuff. We'd leave this in orbit, and then when we wanted to send this crew back home, we would bring another Manta across who would then come and pick them up. Probably not the smartest of ideas, because if something terrible goes wrong on the station, well, we are going to require a new launch to get Kerbals back home. But, you know, I really did not want an entire Manta just sat on that state. It would have looked silly, because... That station is too small to have such a behemoth of a space plane, well, attached to it. It doesn't look that big, the Manta, when we're flying it, but when you compare it to the stations, it, 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 is, it, it is quite large. Anyway, what we are going to be doing now is working on some supplies, because when I got that crew over to Collins Station, I thought, that's fine, we're going to be able to inflate that habitation module, we are good. But it turns out, no, we need material kits. So in order to get material kits to the station, we are going to be building a new supply module from Trap, and we will send that over. And this got me thinking. I did mention it in the last episode, but I thought, well, if we've got some material kits over there already, why not just add some specialized parts as well? And then at a later date, we can add an extra planetary launch pad's launch pad, and we can build stuff around the new space station around Armstrong. So that is what we're going to be doing. I'm not going to do that in this episode. I think that is going to be coming in the following episode, because we've already got quite a lot that we are going to be doing in this one. But yes, it does mean that we will be able to build craft around Armstrong. That's going to be great, because that does mean we can build all of our future base modules around Armstrong 
means I don't have to design any sort of tugs really because I can just design landing engines and it's going to be much easier to put down a rather large surface base which we will be doing after our next interplanetary mission. At least I feel that is where the timeline is going to be going at the moment. Anyway, it doesn't take an awful long time to plot out our rendezvous with Colin Station and get this rather hefty, chunky module full of material kits and specialized parts docked to the station. I'm absolutely in love with docking port alignment indicator now. I can't believe it took me so long to get used to this mod, but oh my god, it makes docking so simple. I still haven't unlocked even MechJeb's auto dock, so I am having to do all of my docks manually still. And yes, no, this mod just makes it an absolute dream to perform docking. So I tried inflating the hab module then, and it didn't work. And I was like, but wait, why? We've got the, we've got the material kits. Turns out that I'd forbidden them on that part. And because of that, well, yes, we couldn't inflate that. But just a little click of a button, we unforbade them and we were able to inflate the hab module. And now the station looks a little bit better. It's no longer a narrow, thin tube. It looks, it looks more interesting in my opinion anyway. But with that being done, what we are gonna do is of course get Jez Kerman out and we are just gonna go around destroying any parts that aren't really necessary for the station. This is to save on parts so that I don't have a bad time whenever I visit the station and get something like three frames per second. And we also get material kits back from that. And obviously we now have a location to store material kits so we are going to be storing those for future use for building spacecraft around Armstrong, which is going to be great. Anyway, with that being done, we did return to the crew manta that we sent up. I did kind of forget about it before, well, after I sent those material kits and I thought, oh God, we've got that manta just hanging around Armstrong. We need to get that back. Luckily though, I didn't forget about it for too long. And Ziggy Kerman III and Michael Kraken Kerman, well, they didn't go crazy. They didn't run out of food and everything was okay. And we were able to get back to road successfully. And once again, proving that we are capable of performing a runway landing after having left Armstrong orbit. In order to do this, I do get a nice circular orbit around road before I return, but the Manta is more than capable. And you can see we have once again touched down on the runway with 519 meters per second of delta v left which is still a huge amount that that's that's going to be great and obviously i did mention we probably will be adding some sort of vtol functionality to this design at a later date they probably won't be as efficient as the engines that we've got on at the moment but you know we've got delta v to spare so it isn't going to be the end of the world. I know there was also a recommendation of building some sort of transfer vehicle that maybe we can send from this station here over to Armstrong. And I did mention in a comment, I don't really want to do that because that just adds an extra step, an intermediary step that just, it's, it's going to be a bit tedious. I'd rather just launch the crew straight from road, get them over to Armstrong. It, it's going to make it a lot easier. It will mean that I can film these videos a lot easier and yeah, it'll just be a lot nicer. Anyway, whilst I was talking about that, what we have been building at the totally reliable assembly platform is our ore miner that we are going to be sending down to the surface base that I put down two episodes ago. So that base, I am very sorry that I announced like a, a naming thing for that base, but I forgot, I completely forgot when I designed this in the live stream that I designed it in, I did promise someone, I think it was off the back of a donation or the fact that they were an absolutely fantastic moderator on my Discord, that I would name it Nuke Base One. So that is going to be the name of the base. We are going to have another opportunity to name something, I think in the following episode, because that's when the interplanetary vessel is going to be constructed. And I haven't got a name. I've got a name for the class of the vehicle that it's going to be called. It will be the EVE class interplanetary vessel. I'm going to go back to the way that I used in the old series and we're going to name our interplanetary vessel classes after the old planets in the stock Kerbal Space Program solar system. But yes, no, the actual name of the craft hasn't been decided yet. So we, we will get to do that in the next episode. I'm sorry that I asked for names and then I have to go back on that promise. Anyway, we are now burning over to Armstrong. One weird thing about this, I'm not sure if you caught it, once again, extraplanetary launch pads was being a little bit weird. When I built this in the VAB, those fuel tanks that contained the engines on, they were full and the fuel tanks actually on the craft, the, the main minor section were empty. But when we released this from the totally reliable assembly platform, 
it kind of got a little bit wonky, and that meant that I had to shift the thrust limiter, the throttle limiters on all of those engines, until I discovered that the fuel had gone in all weird positions. As soon as I transferred that across, we could just full throttle this thing and everything worked as it should have done. It was a little bit unfortunate and I was spending quite a bit of time faffing around trying to get this to work. But in the end, we were capable of flying this as intended. Because when I built this in the VAB, which I didn't show, well, I did have RCS build aid up. And I made sure that we, well, the, the torque from these engines firing with this offset center of mass wasn't going to be a problem. We, we should be able to fully throttle this and not go spinning all over the place, which would have been great. But obviously when we released that, that didn't happen due to extra planetary launch pads being a little bit annoying. But we are now coming down over Nuke Base 1 and... I'm just hovering a little bit here because obviously I've got 1,500 meters per second of delta V left in this. That's a lot. I thought, well, let's try and get somewhere relatively decent. We want to get relatively close and we want it to be somewhere that, you know, kind of matches with everything. But we were able to get that all connected up. We got Small Kerman out and he was able to connect that using those flexi tubes, which are so nice. And then once again, we got him out and destroyed all the remaining, the remaining, the remaining parts that we no longer needed. Just to, just to keep me a little bit more sane. Yes, because I, I want to get good frames around my bases. It's a little bit annoying going somewhere and getting like two frames per second. So if I can keep my parts down, that is great. Anyway, I skipped the building of this, but we did build this from the trap station. This is now going to be our small transfer vessel. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that Kerbal got a little bit bonked when connecting those two. Yes, 320 days later, that's how long it took to actually build or, or refine all of the enriched uranium that we want to send up in this vehicle. But anyway, yeah, we built this a trap. We sent this over, but because it took so long and I wanted these episodes to be a little bit shorter, I skipped out most of that, but we did get it here. We did land it successfully. We took 320 days to get all of the enriched uranium, and now we are going to be sending this up to Collins Station, where we will be turning that enriched uranium into fission pellets. And we can also fuel this up every time we visit the station now, or, or the surface base, Nuke Base 1, because that ore miner does also have a facility upon it which can convert that ore into liquid fuel and oxidizer, and it's the 3.5. 75 meter variant of that which means it is absolutely crazy at producing liquid fuel and oxidizer and in a future video we will be utilizing that to create a bit of a fuel base up at Collins Station as well. Yes, Collins Station will have fuel for days but you can see now we are indeed producing fission pellets and they get built a lot faster than the enriched uranium which is fabulous. But that will be it for this episode. Thank you for watching. I've been Karnasa and I will see you later.